All right, David, today we're going to take some time and talk just about one market today. Phoenix, Arizona. <laughs> So Thanks I think it'd be helpful just to say, you know, to give, again, this, hopefully this podcast is helpful if you don't know anything about Phoenix, or if you do know some things about Phoenix, you'll learn something new. So I think it'd be helpful to talk about kind of the, some of the historical context narrative of the Phoenix market, talk about what's going on currently, and yeah. look, look into the future, how do you see you know, that market continue to evolve, Yeah. Uh, you know, again, one, two, five years out. So yeah. let's talk about, you know, kind of how Phoenix got to be what it is today, some of the historical factors that have come into play in, in the Phoenix data center market. Yeah, in the U.S., there's really six major data center markets. You know, Northern Virginia is the largest. Then you have areas like Dallas and Chicago and Phoenix that are kind of in Northern California that are kind of in that next group. And then Atlanta maybe is below that from a size perspective. And Phoenix is really steadily grown over the last five years. You know, when we started tracking the market back in 2015, um, the market was 140 megawatts of multi-tenant commission power that we track. And year to date today in 2021, uh, it's 307 megawatts. So it's essentially double, doubled over the last uh, five years, which speaks to the growth that's taken place, uh, which we'll talk about here in a little bit. Um, and, you know, it really has, when you think about Phoenix as a market, there's really five different areas. You know, in some are, some places you'd call those boroughs, but in... So it's it, boroughs west. <laughs> in Phoenix, we'll just call them areas. Yes. Uh, where regions, the, yeah, zones, re, yeah. submarkets. I think the term is submarkets. Let's in the real that. estate world, yes, it is. It's submarkets. Um, so Phoenix has five distinct areas of data center growth. And most markets start, if you look back in the past at Dallas, Chicago... Uh, you know, Northern Virginia kind of, um, you know, they have like distinct downtown areas where there's a carrier hotel and the growth begins in Phoenix carrier hotels, 120 East Van Buren digital realty owns that. But around that downtown area, there's also some other pretty big data center providers that have large footprints. Um, Iron Mountain's probably a really good example of one. Um, they, you know, acquired IOS assets years ago. Uh, and have been growing since then. QTS has a site there. So that's kind of how downtown works. Then probably seven or eight years ago, gosh, it's funny now I'm like, I think as I think in my head, I'm like, oh, five years ago, but it was really like eight to 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, Chandler, Arizona, which is south of Phoenix, really started to grow. Digital Realty has a presence there. Cyrus One has a very large campus in that area. Uh, and so H5 data center has a spot there. So that's, and, and we've seen that market grow significantly over time. Um, then we also started seeing, that was south of Phoenix, and we started seeing growth north of, of the downtown area. And Align Data Centers is, is clearly the, the largest provider in that market. And they have a gigantic facility there, um, and they've been very successful. Uh, and then if you move to the east, you have Mesa. And Mesa is interesting because you've got a, a number of different things happening. You have some cloud service providers that have bought their own land. And so they own land and will build and own and operate their own um, facilities. You have uh, Edgecore is a good example of a company that has built a purpose-built facility in uh, Mesa. And then you have, you know, someone like Evoke who acquired AT&T assets and has continued to grow their footprint in that market in, you know, the legacy AT&T facilities. And so that's a really interesting dynamic because you have like big wholesale opportunities as well as like more retail op opportunities with someone like Evoke that does, you know, probably one to 20 cabinet, 50 cabinet type um, requirements. So, and then you move to the other side of the market, uh, the west side, which is where Goodyear is. So if you want to see spring training games, you go to Goodyear. Yeah, I do. That's right. So you go to Goodyear, but you can also see a number of different data center um, sites that have been purchased by operators that are looking to grow as well as cloud service providers that own and operate their own property. So that's how the five areas of Phoenix have been you know, developed over the last five, 10 years. You know, you mentioned some of the cloud service providers over in Mesa. Yeah. And, you know, if you look at, you know, how operators and probably those hyperscalers have kind of planned for future growth yeah. in Phoenix, you, know, you can see that we call we capture that as like a planned power metric. Yes. And it in and, and Phoenix is a market where that's so far out of skew with yeah. the current size of the market. Yes. And it's almost like 
we know this, but like the 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 whiff of uh, of an in- of interest from some of those larger customers can really drive market yeah. activity. So that kind of pivoting towards you know what's kind of going on in Phoenix today. Yeah. And talk about specifically. On the, I know most people are interested in what those cloud service providers are doing, but also you know there's plenty of other activity there. So talk about like what's going on in Phoenix today. Yeah, and 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 uh, the related to the plan power, I actually have some stats for you. Oh, you do. I have my stat glasses on, so some stats <laughs> stats for you. So I thought that was my why well, you had those on. That's right. Yeah. So in uh, in we we track plan power here at Data Center Hawk. So planned data center projects. So let me walk you through the last five years, how that's changed. Please. In 2017, we tracked 185 megawatts of planned projects. It was a lot, but uh, in 2018, it went from 185 to 523. In 2019, it went from, or it went from 523 in t- to 2019, uh, 1197 megawatts, so 1.2 gigawatts. Uh, in 2020, it went to 1. 492, 1492 megawatts. In 2021, it went to 16, 1690. So it's like basically 10x in the last yes. five years. Yeah, and so you, your point is like the out of skew um, comment, which really has to do with the, you know, when those cloud service providers start growing in an area and they express interest in an area, the data center operators are looking to make sure that they can meet the timelines moving forward. So I think what's really important to know is like there's not – you know, 1,700 megawatts of construction taking place in Phoenix right now. But I think what it shows is that as those groups want to grow there, uh, there's a pathway for growth. And there's other markets where that's not the case. In fact, I would tell you that more than ever, this growth, uh, like being able to grow significantly in markets, is more important than it's ever been. And because of things like regulatory issues or because of things like, you know, power costs or tax ch- challenges, it can really hinder a market's growth opportunities. And so the fact that you have that path, um, and which we can talk about here, like what that means for the future, um, I think makes Phoenix a really interesting market moving forward. Um, and then I think the other thing in the, in the past is Phoenix is like, benefited from being close to the west coast but not on the west coast coast, yeah um so the fact that you know there's ample amount of land to grow phoenix we're not california that's (laughs) That's their greatest sales pitch that's right at this point no offense california well maybe some offense. (laughs) (laughs) no but it's you know there's i mean just the challenges that, that companies have there for growing and you it's still there's still growth happening in that market but it's 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 just different so um so anyway, I think the fact that it's there, but it's not, you know, in that area is is a benefit and has benefited that, that area. What you're seeing now in that market, which I think is really interesting, is this dual strategy with data center, big data center users, hyperscale. These are, you know, 10 companies, 20 companies across the world that are growing in ways that we've really never seen in the space. And they do two things. They, they, they buy land and then they will build, own and operate those facilities themselves. And then about four or five years ago, they began leasing large infrastructure in big cities. So to support the business um, and consumer, you know, products that they have, they're out in the market. And so that's that's a big trend that we're seeing. And it's really happening in Phoenix. Uh, not just, you know, it's happening in Mesa, it's happening in Goodyear. Those are the two areas we're really seeing it take place right now. And there's you know, the, the interesting thing is there's really nothing that can, you know, will stop that because you do have ample amounts of power. That's the thing. You power, land. Yeah. Uh, you know, water. Again, water, I'm not yep. super familiar with the water situation, yep. things, but it doesn't seem like you hear it as a challenge there. Yeah. I whereas think, it might be in other markets. Yeah. And, you know, <clears throat> the data center users there as well as the operators have really worked over the last five years to get as much water out of the data center design as they can. Yeah. Um, and and so I think that's a benefit. But yeah, so that you've got the infrastructure there. You've got a really good tax incentive story here. You know, we say it all the time, but like the quickest way to change a market is change tax incentives. And that really has uh, that really can impact the way that companies look at a market because the cost, just the savings on the sales tax, like the IT infrastructure sales tax uh, or the, the stuff on the race floor or data center space now is. I mean, significant. So, um, so anyway, that's that's the really exciting thing about a market like this, and that's why you're seeing, you know, so many 
people there. One of the misconceptions I think about Phoenix is that it's oversupplied. So, you know, when somebody hears like, oh, there's so much planned power or there's, you know, that can keep people outside of the market. But if you look at really what is being built, uh, who has started actually doing the permitting and the things necessary to complete, you know, data center developments and how many of those are leased or not, there's, it's, it's a small list. So given the big demand that's looking in that market, as well as uh, the supply, it's, it's a really interesting market. And, you know, it's certainly one that I'm excited to see what happens in the next, you know, five to 10 years. Yeah, speaking of that, so talk about, you know, next one, two, five years. How do you expect the things you describe yeah. up to current to continue or how they might change going forward. Yeah, the, the the one thing that I'm encouraged by too in Phoenix is like the enterprise market growth. So if you think about, uh, you know, areas like Dallas, Chicago and Phoenix to an extent, a lot of what has built the strength of those markets from a data center standpoint has mm-hmm. been insurance companies, financial companies, technology companies growing in the market. And a lot of people, in the, especially in the last two years, the growth has not been necessarily like new requirements coming into the market. It's been expansions of, of companies that are currently in a market. And in an area like Phoenix, we've seen that take place. And I think that's a really big benefit of a market like that, that the, that the business climate is strong and moving forward. And there's a lot of stuff taking place there and, and probably... Uh, I would say it's, you know, somewhat been rejuvenated over these last two or three months, um, yeah. just where COVID is and the fact that it feels like we're getting to a different place and people feel more comfortable in their figuring out what the future environment might be versus a year ago when everyone was scratching their heads trying to figure out what was going on. Uh, so that's a really good thing. And I think over the next year to, to three years, that enterprise sector in a market like Phoenix will grow, which is important because it takes um, – Co- you know, companies that are looking at, you know, landing 20 cabinet type requirements. And we mentioned Evoke as a good example, or a Flexential, they're up in like North Phoenix, like the companies like that. And even some of the, the bigger providers, I think that's a, that's a big opportunity. Um, you know, the second thing I would say is just a cloud growth. I mean, the fact that that market has been, you know, tagged by those bigger companies, like this is a market we want to grow in, is a really big benefit. So this is a market we talked about you know, today that's 300 megawatts. Five years ago, it was, or in 2015, it was 140 megawatts. It could very easily be like 600 megawatts in two years, yeah. you know, just based on, or three years, based on some of the growth and in, in requirements that are that are in the market today. Um, so that's a very probably op- optimistic perspective, but I wouldn't, it wouldn't surprise me. Yeah, it's certainly within the realm of possibility. Yes. You know, given the the ability for growth there's certainly there's avenues for that growth to happen yes and you know the other interesting another interesting dynamic over the next one to five years that we'll see play out in phoenix is this kind of back and forth between you know goodyear and mesa Mm -hmm. and the dynamics that have created that situation and how and and the, the the data center provider growth in those markets um and so i think like another example in mesa is like You know, you have NTT that's building a shell there. But, um, you know, when you think about uh, when you think about Goodyear and Mesa compared to one another, uh, they're similar and that they have. I think you mentioned it before, just like larger tracts of land. Um, They have a pathway to power growth. The thing that's the thing that I think is is interesting about Mesa is like the residential growth around that area. Like that is the market is moving that way. And you 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 see that. So those sites won't be there forever. And then the other thing is if you flip to, to Goodyear, it's more of like an industrial area. So there's a, a, a number of like uh, distribution, like facility distribution sites for products of different e-commerce companies, et cetera, that are growing that market. So, you know, while the land is there today, it won't be there forever. Um, and it's weird to think that way in our space because we've always said like, hey, there's, you know, in certain markets, there's like land, to, you know, available and it's easy to find land sites as we're as this market is changing that's not the case anymore you know it's not like there's just land sites everywhere for data center growth so as you see that take place um that will that could move some things to some other areas in phoenix so you know with all those things going on we're i'm i'm really bullish about the the market you know we um 
it, it's fun to get to even see these sites and, and get to watch the growth take place. And, um, you know, Phoenix is a market that I think if you're in, the, if you're in this space as a, as certainly as a data center operator, but, or as an investor, or even as like a data center user, and you've got a big footprint, uh, and you're trying to figure out like from a, you know, Southwest perspective of the U S where to be, and you're not looking at Phoenix, you're probably making a mistake just because of how much growth is there. Yeah. Well, that'll be exciting to watch. And again, something that we'll be tracking. Obviously you can check out datacenterhawk.com for more detail on some of the things you shared. So that was fun. I think we should do this for other markets. That's right. Let's do it. There's certainly a lot going on, uh, in, in again, across the U S and even Europe and even APEC coming soon.